All right, let's go to the subject matter of the day. Um, are we on Facebook Live? Huh? Okay, let's start. You'll, you'll catch us on the way. Okay. I want you to go to Genesis where we started last week. And uh, I'm changing how I'm starting a little bit, so that scripture will not be at the front. I want you to look at Genesis. And Genesis chapter 1, I want you to read the last verse, and then I want us to read the first verse in Genesis chapter 2. I want to show you something interesting. Anyone with a Bible? Please read it for us. Yes, Gaston has said a microphone. Where's the microphone? Genesis 1 31. Mm -hmm. And the God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, that is suitable and pleasant, and he approved it completely. Okay. There was evening, there was, um, there was morning, a sixth day. So the sixth day that God won, he just created man, okay? So man was created on the sixth day. Just created man, he says it is good and it's proper, right? So what is the next day about? Go to the next day, that's chapter 2, verse 1. Genesis 2, 1. Mm -hmm. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. Mm -hmm. Continue. That, now verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Okay, so why do you think, this is interesting, God creates everything in six days, okay? If you were writing that story, you would say he finished everything on the sixth day and that was it. Oh, but this is what I mean. When you're doing a job, do you write about the day you finished the job? The day after? <laughs> it does not make sense. Because no one says Usain Bolt ran 100 meters and it took him 10 meters to stop. Do, do we count? Is there a measure of how quickly he stops? So the Bible, in talking about the seventh day, is attaching significance to the seventh day the same way it attached significance to the first day. Can we agree? So that means that the seventh day is symbolic. Can we agree? It is definitely symbolic. It must mean something to God for him to talk about it. Correct? Now, if God had finished all his work, senior, and he'd done everything, then the next verse does not make sense. Read the next verse. Chapter 2, yes. Uh, we had read up to verse, verse two. 2. So verse 3, yes. Okay, no, verse 3. And God blessed, spoke good of the seventh day, mm -hmm. set it apart as his own, and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all his work which he had created and done. Okay, continue. Verse 4. This is the history of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Verse 5 says, When no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had so yet pause, sprung. Pause. God rested his work before there was anything on the earth. Okay, let me give you an example. This is God. He says in verse 1, I have finished all the work, I have rested. Correct? Then, he then declares that there was no plant on the earth. So, had he finished? Uh, <laughs> okay. L 
let's ask a question. Jesus says that his father is always? So Jesus is always? Okay. Jesus at the cross said it is? You've still not yet finished what Christ started. So what is this thing God calls rest? Because it surely cannot be what you and I call rest. Because when you are a kid, you are told you'll sleep when you finish your... So imagine if you went to sleep and you wake up in the morning and not a letter was on your homework. It doesn't add up. <laughs> I want us to... You know, when you read the Bible, you need to stop assuming you know. It's, it's, it's the most difficult thing to do. But you need to stop assuming you. Now, this thing called rest, Sabbath, God uses it a lot throughout the scriptures. In fact, we have an entire denomination based on rest on the seventh day. Okay? Which I find interesting because we know their longitudes now. So which day is Sabbath if Australia is a whole day ahead of us? <laughs> no, uh, question, which day is the Sabbath now? So clearly, again, this thing called rest, Sabbath, and I'm putting these two words together, because they mean the same thing, is not what we've thought. Can we agree? Because Jesus asked questions like, was man made for the Sabbath, or the Sabbath for man? And, and we, we take that question and skip over it. Was man made for the Sabbath, or was the Sabbath made for man? So you've read that in your Bible. What does it mean? Oh, question. Jesus is asking a critical question. This water, he's asking, was Mark made for the water, or was the water made for Mark? That means that if Sabbath was made for me, then it works for me. <laughs> Problem with our modern understanding is we took Sabbath to be resting. You see, that's what we understand. That's what we argue. Even Christians who go to church on Sunday say, I've dedicated this day to God, I will not do any work. So that's how we think. So people who watch me on TV on KTN on Sunday are offended. I must surely be a devil worshipper because I do not attend a service on a particular day. So if Jesus is to ask and you are to answer that you were not created for the Sabbath, but rather the Sabbath exists because of you, question of what use is that Sabbath to you? If the water was made for me, I know. I take it, it nourishes my body, it removes toxins from my body, and it shall be expelled through sweat and my blood, correct? So Sabbath, if it was made for you, how do you use it? <laughs> okay? Now, I want you to understand and write in your notes that God takes Sabbath very seriously. He does. There's a commandment about it. So the question must be, what is this thing called Sabbath 
and why do I rest? Now, a uh, problem again with humanity is we like picking the law. Okay? So we know the Sabbath of days and we don't keep the Sabbath of years. I'll give you an example. It says <laughs> that every seventh year you shall rest the land. Sindio? So if you're good at keeping your Saturday or Sunday Sabbath, why don't you keep the seven-year Sabbath? Useme, I have been at this job for seven years. Dear boss, I'd like a year off. <laughs> so we like keeping the law. You know, I, I, I love how Christians like picking the law. Uh, so, uh, the question is, you, you, you're keeping the days, you're not keeping the years. Now, I'm not asking you to take a year off, because thou shalt get fired. But I'm asking and challenging you to heighten your understanding of what Sabbath is. That's what I'm doing. So, clearly, we know that in the Old Testament... It was a picture, an example, a sign of things to come. Correct? Our problem with us Christians, imagine if I give you a voucher. And this voucher says go to Serena Hotel. Okay? Now come. And she's supposed to go to Serena Hotel. Right? Now, assume the hotel is where... No, you are the sign. So put up your T. You put it up, put it up like a sign. So he's the signboard to the hotel. Okay? And the hotel is where the camera is. Okay? Now, if I tell her to go to the hotel, the first thing she must do is look for the sign. Correct? So go to the sign. When she gets to the sign, is she at the hotel? But this is a problem with us Christians. We got to the sign and checked in. This is our problem. We checked into the sign, put our luggage, and assumed this is a tented camp. So we went and bought a tent and now live at the and blame God as to why there is no room service. Uh, do you understand what I mean? So, whenever we are reading the Bible, we don't dwell at the sign. We look for what the sign is showing. Senor, please sit. If I tell you, this is an example of water. Okay? I've given you a sample of water. Do you assume that is all the water you'll need and go home? So if the Old Testament is the example, why are we stuck at it? Do you understand? So clearly, the Sabbath of days and years is an example of something. Okay? Now let me give you what the Sabbath of years was, how it was supposed to work. Naturally, when you tell people to rest on the seventh year, they're like, wait, what will we eat? Correct? Because imagine if Kenya, all the farmers did not plant in one year. <laughs> well, Olo is right. But God says, in the sixth year, your crop will harvest for the Sabbath year and the year after that. So you'll have three years worth of harvest on the sixth year. So again, what, does, what is it symbolizing? Because imagine if you've been farming an acre of land, Sindio, planting a hundred seeds of maize, producing a hundred cobs of maize, Sindio, what miracle will happen on the sixth year that this one acre from the same crop will produce three cobs of maize per stock? 
I want you to think about it. What wheat is this that on the same acreage of land will produce three years from the same seed? Because it's the only way I can imagine that you would be able to make use of the land and produce more. Correct? Now, in the book of Ezekiel, God says something very interesting. Elam, if you could go there. It says, Moreover also, I gave them my to be a what? To be a sign. Listen, if, 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 if I tell you I've given you this paper, it is a sign. Right? What is the next logical question? A sign of? But the problem with us is we start thanking God. Oh God, thank you for the sign. Do you understand what madness is? So Sabbath is a? It is a? So question, sign of what? Between me and them, that they may understand and realize that I am the Lord who sanctifies them and, separ and, sep and separates them and sets them apart. So it's a sign that you must understand that he is what? He is the Lord. So we're going somewhere. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes and they despised and cast away my judgments. Which if a man keeps, he must even live in and buy them. And they grievously profaned my Sabbaths. Then I thought I would pour out my wrath on them in the wilderness and uproot and consume them. Yet also I lifted up my hand to swear to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them flowing with milk and honey, which is the ornament and glory of all lands. Pause. First, I want to deal with an issue which you guys have never thought to ask. Question, what is a land flowing with milk and honey? Did, don't, did, did you, didn't you ever find it strange that when the spies went in, they did not come back with milk and honey? And no one asked, where is the milk and honey? Why is he mixing issues? Okay? And let's remember, their hearts went after idols. That's not true. The children of Israel, if you remember your history correctly, in their 40 years, worshipped an idol once. So there were no idols So you must ask yourself, what is God saying? In the 40 years, they didn't worship other gods. They were very, hey, they saw the ground open. They were not joking with God. So, why is he tying his statutes to his Sabbaths and idols? Why are these three things connected? These are the questions that I want you to be asking yourself as we go through the study. What is he talking about? Okay? Yet my eye pitied them instead of destroying them, and I did not make a full end of them in the wilderness. But I said to their sons in the wilderness, You shall not walk in the statutes of your fathers, nor observe their ordinances, nor defile yourself with their idols. Strange words, right? Which idols? Which paths? Okay? I'll show you briefly. I am the Lord your God, walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances. And hollow, hallow, and separate, keep holy my Sabbaths, and they shall be, what? He says again, a sign between me and you that you may know, understand, and realize that I am the Lord your God. So, Rest 
is a sign of God being your Lord. Now I know because you're used to praying, oh Lord God, I bless you, oh Lord God Almighty, I bless you, you think Lord and God are the same thing. When it says, I am the Lord your God, it means I am your owner and your God. So what's that what a, lad, a Lord does? So your landlord owns your building. So when he says, I am your Lord, it's supposed to mean, I own you. So when you say Jesus is Lord, it is not a greeting, it is an admission of slavery. Can we agree? Yes. So my question to you, in fact, Melo asked a good question. This is how you test a slave. He asked, why do we get angry when God does not do what we want? Can I tell you why you get angry? Because you are Lord. <laughs> Which of you will get angry at their boss when you send your boss and he does not go? First, can you even imagine sending your boss? You can't, right? But Christians are the only people who tell God, Mimi ni me backslide na God. I really wanted that job. We God I exist. You are right, he does not exist because you are God. You see, <laughs> let me explain. You need to choose who is your Lord. In other words, who gets to say what happens in your life? Who has say? Is it you or God? Mina Uliza. The sign of the lordship of Christ in your life is called rest. Oh. Come to me, all you who labor, and I will give you what? Anyone who knows Christ has rested from all his. Hey. You know, if you understood what I'm saying, I could go home. Come to me, all you who labor, and I will give you. So when you came to Christ, so we're talking about birthrights, what did he write in his will and testament for you? Are we together? Am I class? We should just stop. Because this is a series of classes where I'm still asking you, are you saved? I'll show you how. Let's continue. Say to the Israel, this is Exodus. Truly you shall keep my... For it is a sign... It's a problem of worshipping days is we got stuck at the sign. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I who sanctify you and set you apart for myself. So I'm giving you two references so you understand that the sign of the Lordship of Christ in my life is when I possess a thing called rest. Okay. Question. How many of us have rest? Okay. You have rest? Not prophetically. Sometimes. Sometimes. Then you don't have it. 
Now I'll show you in scripture, don't worry. You see, when I say I have a car, I cannot answer sometimes I have a car. Do, do you get? <laughs> I own a car. When I say I own a car, I cannot say sometimes. Like sign eight, I don't own it anymore. Eight or five, oh now I own it. <laughs> oh nah, no, I know. <laughs> Am I making sense? So we need to first understand what is this thing called rest because it is the lack of understanding that is causing Nyambura trouble because she fears laziness and this misconception that caused you to worship a day and that's why you still feel the urge to, to, to go to Kuriakos on Sunday because it's the day of the Lord. So. Because you do not understand this concept called Okay? Now, in Hebrews, a story starts. And it's a long reading, so I'll read it quickly, and then we'll study it. And then I'll put it together. So then, brethren, consecrated and set apart for God, who share in the heavenly calling, thoughtfully and attentively consider Jesus, the apostle and high, priest, whom we confessed as ours when we embraced the Christian faith. Correct? This is what we did. See now, see how faithful he was to him who appointed him apostle and high priest, as Moses was also faithful in the whole house of God. Yet Jesus has been considered worthy of much greater honor and glory than Moses, just as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. Let's continue. For of course, every house is built and furnished by someone. But the builder of all things and the furnish of the entire equipment of all things is God. And Moses certainly was faithful in the administration of all God's house, but it was only as a ministering servant. In his entire ministry, he was but a testimony to the things which were to be spoken, the revelations to be given afterward in Christ. Okay? So, what he is talking about is everything in Moses was again a sign. Okay? But Christ the Messiah was faithful over his own father's house as a son and master of it. And it is we who are now members of this house if we hold fast and firm to the end our joyful and exalted confidence and sense of triumph in our hope in Christ. Continue. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. You are told this so that you could get born again, right? And this is a problem with Christians. This scripture starts by saying you are already born again. So it starts by saying we who accepted. So it says, today, if who hears? People who are born again. If you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts, as happened in the rebellion of Israel and their provocation and embitterment of me in the day of testing in the wilderness. Please understand, the children of Israel had already left Egypt. No, they already knew God. So what Hebrews is addressing is someone who already knows God and is on a journey with God. Can we agree? So this is not a scripture about people who do not know God. Are we okay? I'm sorry, if that's how you got born again, we are upgrading. Okay? Where your fathers tried my patience and tested my forbearance and found I stood their test and they saw my works for 40 years. Okay? So, can you see the connection between this and Ezekiel? It's the same story, right? And so I was provoked, displeased, and sorely grieved with that generation, and said they will always err and are led astray in their hearts, and they have not perceived and rec or recognized my ways and become progressively better and more exper experimentally and intimately acquainted with them. Okay? So God is saying, what are the ways they missed? What he's saying here, if I may give you the hint, is that this guy has experienced miracles of God's provision, but never got to a point where they trusted God. Sound familiar? Yes. Where you've experienced one miracle yesterday, you forget and doubt him again. 
Then you experience another miracle, you forget, doubt him again, and you wonder why you're still in the wilderness. Oh, <laughs> I just told you why you're still in the wilderness. <laughs> because you've not gotten intimately acquainted with your new normal. It still surprises you. Oh, I prove to you it still surprises you. Look at how shocked you are when you share that testimony. Ah, yeah, yeah, I'm saying, unajua nini may happen? Sikuwa na rent. God may come through. It shocks you. Oh, see, that's what we do. Yo, if one of us, the leg grew back, we would talk about it for weeks. Yeah? I'm identifying to you the people who died in the wilderness. In other words, let me explain to you. These guys had seen God do wonderful things, feed them, do all those things, right? Then they could not trust God to give them the promised land. See, that's what they did. Oh, they'd seen Pharaoh killed. They'd seen uh, enemies battered. They'd seen ten plagues. They'd seen so many things, right? Couldn't trust God to give them the promise. Oh, uh, you see, let me put it to you easily, okay? How many times do you honestly believe that at the end of your life you'll be seriously great? Great. That you take it for granted. There's one hand. In fact, let me prove to you that it's a problem. How many of you think about 20 years from now? Not, not think of it nicely. You know, you, uh, let me explain think. Because I know where you're going. There's that thinking for to make. Uh, that thinking for hey, not that. Where you can specifically almost to a T say what will happen to you. How many of you can tell me in 10 years this is what the Lord shall have done in my life. Specifically. Not an ambiguous, I'll get a car. So you play sport pesa. <laughs> Accordingly, I swear in my wrath and indignation, they shall not enter into my... So he's just suddenly changed for you what is Sabbath. <laughs> See, Ezekiel says they profaned the Sabbath. So let me tell you what he was saying. He is saying they profaned the Sabbath because they did not want to enter the promised land. Remember, in Ezekiel he said they profaned the Sabbath. That demonstrated to you how they were dependent on manna. Manna didn't fall on the Sabbath. So they didn't work. There was nothing to do. They were not farming, they were not fighting, they were just walking around. So the profaning of the Sabbath is explaining to you that they shall not enter into my... Okay? So the reality of the Sabbath, rest is called the promise of God. Rest is the land flowing with milk and honey. I'll prove it to you. It's in scripture. It says, Therefore beware, brethren, take care, lest there be any of you a wicked and believing heart. First, please notice, what is a wicked heart? It's not karumanzira. It's not a witch. It's any heart that does not believe in God. How many times have you been wicked? Which refuses to cleave to trust in and rely on him, leading you to turn away and desert or stand aloof from the living of God. What, what does that tell you? <laughs> the unbelief that causes you to say, this is too hard. 
I'll stop fighting. I'll stop looking for that opportunity. I'll stop hoping. I, 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 my, my leg will always hurt. I will never get married. This is my portion. This is what it means to desert and stand aloof. Remember, these people they are talking about, they never told God to take a hike. So for them to stand aloof from God, all they had to say is we do not believe you when you tell us you will give us this thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. You see, if you understood what I'm saying, you would know how guilty we all are on a consistent basis of this thing. But instead, one, admonish, other, encourage one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened into settled. Please notice, it's called what? How do you settle and rebel? It's a simple thing. It's a simple matter. Settling and rebelling is what the guy with one talent did. He looked at it. He was like, kazi ni ngumu. Nifanya biashara. Ah, it's hard. He settled. It is what you do every day when you know God has called you to do something. And you don't do it. Waiting for a breakthrough, capital, whatever your excuse is. So you don't do it, you pack it. And then whatever you do no next is called settled rebellion. <laughs> mm? Yes. You've and your rebellious spekyaki. By the deceitfulness of sin, by the fraudulence, the stratagem, the trickery, which the delusive glamour of his sin may play on him. Now, I know every time you think of sin, because we were taught it is just adultery. Eh? Please understand the context. The context here is a people who God has told enter the promised land. And they have refused. Why? Do you know why? Do you know why? Because the wilderness can be nice. Oh, you can settle in the wilderness. It has manner. Your clothes don't wear out. Your shoes don't change. Can you, do you know you can get used to problems? It's called that's how things are. Oh, we are experts at this. We check in. And we say, let me tell you how serious this is. My son is now six. Ever since he was born, he's never had serious problems with his sinuses. Okay? Then the other day I hear, I'm like, huh? Now, I have had problems with sinuses my entire life. And the first time I had it, I'm like, oh, that's my son. But I had the cure. I went and gave it to him. I sat down and I thought, what nonsense is this? For five years, my son has been okay. So what has changed? Right? So I realized, wait a minute. I also have accepted not to enter rest as far as my sinuses are concerned. I'm so used to it. When I'm about to travel, I run to the chemist and I buy a thousand two hundred shillings worth of medicine. Because I tell them, Makina Celeste, mine don't work for me. I have to buy this expensive thing, 90 shillings a tablet. So, it's easy. It's called settled. You've accepted. Hmm. Accepted financial status, accepted family relationships, accepted uh, health issues, accepted. 
<laughs> Should I speak nice things? The Lord loves you. <laughs> he does. That's why you're hearing this word, by the way. This is probably one of the most important words I'm speaking to you this fine masterclass. Enter into rest. Okay? So it says, uh, continue, Elam, Elam, um, you're still on the same thing. Okay? For we have become fellows with Christ and share in all he has for us. Please notice, he's contrasting it and he's telling you what is the opposite of being settled. He's telling you the opposite of being settled is to become fellows with Christ and share in all he has for us. All. <laughs> Guys, do you understand what all he has for us is? There's, there's an undying body. Let's start there. There's health. There's rivers of living water. There's everything you've ever given coming back to you 10, 30, 100 fold. Huh? There is you succeeding in everything that you do. See, that's what he has for you. That's what Peter said, that he has blessed us in heavenly places with every spiritual. Every spiritual blessing is what is called rest. Do you understand? Oh my goodness. Yani, I might speak your languages. Umanile? Huh? Do you get it? Do you understand? In other words, Sabbath, rest, is called you walking in every single thing that Christ has in store for you. This is your birthright. So think, think about your life. Everything. What are those of you who live in bed sitters? And you've accepted. You live in Kayole, you've accepted. Lived in Ungem, you've accepted. Live in Karen, you've accepted. Live in Riara Road, you've accepted. You, you see, <laughs> let me tell you. Let me ask you a question. My good friend, let me use you as an example, Melo. That's why I said the last place. Melo has lived slightly past 35 years. Sindio? He's, <laughs> well, he's married in case you guys are hunting. I'm joking. <laughs> so Melo has two houses, correct? All right? One very magnificent palace which I've happened to visit. He was very courteous to invite me. Now, one wife. <laughs> now, my question, my question to you is, he probably has, if we are to go by Kenyan life expectancy, he's got another 50 years in him. Sindio? Okay. So in these 50 years, what is he supposed to do? If you've lived 35, slightly above, years, and God has given you a house, Sindio? two houses, by the time you're 90, what, are you supposed, what is supposed to be a testimony? I want to ask you questions. If you've done in 40 years that, where are you supposed to be? You see, <laughs> let me explain to you accuracy in the kingdom. It is called multiplication. If there's no multiplication in your life, remember we talked about fruitfulness? Watch out. <laughs> in other words, I've just declared all of us, myself included, poor. Because I have not yet attained the fullness of what God has for me in my body. Sindio? In my finances, in my ministry, in my family. And every time I settle, I become a what? A rebel. <laughs> Are we okay? 
Many people are shaking their heads. <laughs> Talk to me when they communicate. It's piercing. It's me. It's not me. It's the word. Eh? If only we hold our first newborn confidence and original assured expectation. Let me explain to you what this means. Remember when you were 18? And how you looked at your future. And you were sure. Or better yet, when you checked into campus or college, I'm getting first class honors. Then you got to second sem or first year, you're like, okay. Second up and you saw. <laughs> okay? Or when you graduated and you had a life plan. By 30, I'll be in top 40 under 40. And now you're 41. And you're not in bottom 50 under 100. <laughs> right? So what happens is we lose our newborn confidence that we had once. And you start adjusting your dreams downwards. Hey, can we talk the truth? So are we together? Is this thing helping you? Hey, will someone talk to me? Is that a question? Yeah, please give her the microphone. This is a hard teaching, so I'll go slowly. Um, but the, the thing is, we, we each have unique destinies, right? Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. born uniquely with a unique plan. So comparing, is that really the way to go? Comparing with? Comparing different people's lives. Mm. How, how this life has turned out and this is life. I mean, we all had plans. Yeah. I'm not saying we are just your dreams. I'm not saying we're settling. Mm. But destinies differ. Absolutely. So could you back up further okay. what you're saying? What I'm talking about is this. The exam for your success is your purpose. Sindio? Okay? This is why I gave the example of Melo. And I said for Melo, at his age, he's got two houses. Meaning when he's 90, his exam is different from the guy who when he was at Melo's age, did not have two houses. You see, the kingdom has a higher standard than the world. You see, in the world, to succeed is very easy. In fact, you just have two things, a car and a house. Sindio? Depending on where the car and the house come from, you've succeeded. What I'm talking about here in terms of success is you individually and what your purpose is. That's what I'm talking about. So the comparison, the person in the mirror I'm putting before you is what God promised you in its entirety and what you're settling for. You, underst you understand where I'm coming from? So I'm not comparing Carol with Pauline, no. I'm telling Pauline, this is who God said you would be. How far in this ladder have you come? Okay? So let's continue. Then while it is still called today, if you would hear his voice, when you hear it, do not harden your, as in the rebellion in the desert. So he's being very specific. When the people provoked and irritated and embittered God against them. Do you know what these people did? These people did a scientific study of their problems and accurately discerned that they cannot beat giants. Because even God himself had admitted that this land has seven tribes greater than you. <laughs> so had they accurately discerned their problems? Yes, they had. Are we together? For were they, for who were they who had and yet were rebellious and provoked him? Was it not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he irritated and provoked and grieved for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose dismembered bodies were strewn and left in the desert? 
And to whom did he swear that they should not enter his? So what is rest? The promised land, correct? Can we agree? Rest is a promised land. But to those who disobeyed, who had not listened to his word, and who refused to be compliant or be persuaded. Are you seeing? So we see that they were not able to enter into his rest because of their unwillingness to adhere to and to trust in and rely on God and belief had shut them out. What shut them out? What is it to profane the Sabbath? Unbelief. In other words, to profane the Sabbath is to not believe what God says about you. I can see you are still struggling. Are you okay? You see, how do I put it? In every struggle, in every journey in your life, you will get to a point where you face what seems like an impossible challenge. Sindio? It has happened to everyone in their lives where you seemed to hit a roadblock of all roadblocks. A lot of the time, this is the point you are buoyed on a dream. Sindio? Sometimes it's a simple thing as education. You go to Form 4, qualified for a degree, and it just didn't work. Sometimes it's a cycle of repetition. Everything you've ever tried in your life has never worked. Hey. Or oh, you've been stuck in the same job for so long you do not have hope for tomorrow. And what happens is you are now facing a giant that seems stronger than you. Let's continue. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, okay, let us be afraid to what? To do what? Okay. The best example to give, and this is an example, is always about money. Okay? So let me give you an example. How many believe, and let me qualify what belief is. Belief is knowing that you know that you know that you know. Sindio? That you're convinced. Belief is the way you know your mother is your mother. Yes. Okay? So let me qualify that. So don't tell me the belief of Kuriakos, I am hoping in Mejikaza. It's not what we're talking about. Okay? How many believe that God can make you financially secure? Not can, will make you financially secure. Okay? How many believe, know that you know that you know that you know? Just keep your hands up. I don't know why you're putting them down. Well, let them stay. Okay? So you know that you know that you know that you know that financial independence is coming before December 2018. Hands still up? Okay. So, all right. Now, if you know that you know that you know that financial independence is coming before 20, the end of 2018, can I give you a loan of 100 million you pay me back before the end of the year? Yes. Please do not give me wishful speaking. Let me, let me tell you why I asked that question. You can put your hands down. Eh? You see, when, 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 when guys used to drink, eh? there used to be a group of guys who had a very interesting mentality. Have you ever seen those guys in a bar that are busy ordering one beer, they drink it for three hours, Right? And then a certain sonko says, Mother, my boys are happy to go base. And I'm going to come. Have you ever seen how their lives change? <laughs> Suddenly they know what Glenfiddich is and they can pronounce it, right? Right? Now, you see, if you knew that you knew that you knew, okay? How you are living today would change. Oh. 
let's start. If I promised you 100 million shillings in a week, how many of you would be living the same way? For two people. Here's the thing. You see, if you believe the 100 million is coming, okay, you'd already be shopping for a house. See, that's obvious. Okay? <laughs> I'm trying to explain to you what rest is. You would go and start saying, by the way, e house near how much? I don't like it. I can't poor. You go to another one, you're like, this is the right one. Eh? Deposit ningapi, nakuletea next week. So that's how you work. When, 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 when those of you who are employed and you're working Tao and you pass a shop and it has a shirt you like or a scarf or a skirt you like, you're like, and it's the 27th. You walk in with swagger, you're like, as I book. See, that's how you live your life. You, you, you know that the promise grants you access. Therefore, if you knew that you knew that God got your back, your life would change. True or false? This is what is called rest. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> For indeed, we had the glad tidings gospel of God proclaimed to us. Okay? Just as. Just as means the same as. Correct? So if it means the same as, means that the gospel of God came so that I could enter the promised land. Yeah. Sindio, because this gospel came that you may have life and have that life abundantly. It came so that out of your belly may flow rivers of living water. It came so that whatever you do may prosper. See, that's why it came. You understand? In fact, the, the gospel is proclaimed like this. When, when, when John asks, are you the Christ? What does Jesus answer him? He says, the lame walk, the blind see. And you know what the last thing he said? The poor have received the gospel. Meaning, what is the symbol of the kingdom? The blind see, the lame walk, and the poor receive the gospel. Do you understand? <laughs> oh, guys, are we together? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I I, 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 guys, interact. You, you had a question? Let me ask. Okay. <laughs> Hold on, selector. Um, okay, it's good to have a promise. And like the way you're saying, let's say we are, we are talking more than an M, I mean a hundred M, mm. it's there. But does it mean... I mean, we have these issues of we want to be responsible, you know. And if God plans to give you something like a month from now, I don't think you'll get it two days from now unless there's a special way of shortening the gap. Guys, please understand, and I'm trying to help you. Please stop trying to bring God into your human terms. This is the problem. 
Let me explain to you something. If you take a train, and it was an example I was giving before, yeah? If you take a train and you put it outside of its tracks, eh? it will move, Sindio? With a lot of struggle, but it will, correct? Now, imagine if all the trains you've ever seen were off their tracks, but they were moving. And imagine if you became a transport engineer for those trains. You will know how trains move very well without trucks. You'll be a professional, correct? The day an engineer who comes and tells you about trucks, tells you about trucks, you will argue. But you will argue based on a false assumption. Do you understand? You will argue that trains as easy pita five kilometers per hour. Mina zijua ni So that's what you will say, and you will be right because all the trains that you've ever known have gone five kilometers per hour. But when you take this same train and you put it on the track for which it was created, it is a whole different dynamic. Do you understand? So please understand that your understanding of how the world works has been informed by broken trains on broken tracks. So every time you hear God, you try to bring him into your broken life and try to tell him how it works. That's the problem. So when God tells you, let's conquer giants, you're like, eh, what are you when you come Egypt, my Egyptians will come this tall. No, I'll come to Twanga. Have you seen how tall? That's what we do. Oh, let me let me let me prove it to you. Please remember, the last time you failed a good one. You know, maybe there was this opportunity, you applied for a job, or there was a business deal. Okay, whatever it was, you applied for something. And you put all your hopes in it. I'm sure everyone has done this, right? And you prayed, and you cursed, and you fasted, and you crossed your fingers, and you did everything in your power to get in, right? Or to get this deal done. And then it failed, okay? Now today, if I asked you to apply again, you know how much you'll argue with me? You'll be like, are you crazy? I've tried. Huko, watutua na braibundi wanaingianga. Do you understand? It's called bringing God to your broken tracks. So let's not bring God into our brokenness just yet. Are we together? Are we back? For indeed, we have heard the glad tidings of the gospel of God. Telling you that the gospel, when you hear it, comes to promise you of a land flowing with milk and honey. Don't doubt it, he says. Don't doubt it. And I know the, the, the struggle in your head is, is, but Paul was poor. Okay. Question. Question. Paul is under arrest. He's in Rome. Where does he stay? He lived. He said he lived in his rented house. What was the most expensive city in the world then? So he could rent a house in Rome and he was broke. He didn't rent a room. <laughs> you see, we, we, we read the Bible. We read the Bible and want to find solace, but trust me, it's not there. You see, if you look at the story of Jesus, tell me, is that the lifestyle of a poor guy? One whose clothes are so good, they have to debate about it. Okay? Someone who wakes up and says, by the way, to enter Jerusalem. You, you try getting 12 people to Mombasa. Eh? Alafu jue. It is not an easy journey because you've got to think that every town you stop in Dioni, you've got to find a place to sleep, a place to eat. 
you, you think Jesus was poor when he's faced with 4,000 men, not counting women and children, and he turns to his disciples and says, go buy them bread. And they don't turn back to him and say, we don't have money. They said, there's not enough bakeries. That's their problem. <laughs> yeah, they said, if we go to town, we will not find enough bread. We have enough money, but there will not be enough bread. So we, we, we have this picture because it says he became a servant. <sighs> Let me tell you, for, for Christ to just turn human was a huge jump by itself. You see, you, you, you forget one thing, that the angel shows up to Joseph when Jesus is about two years old and tells Joseph, listen, take your son and go to Egypt. Okay? Mm, it, Joseph is like, okay. And he goes, wakes up, and he goes. You think it was a cheap journey? It wasn't. Because it costs money to travel, right? It costs money to live in Egypt for many years until Herod dies. So imagine this guy did not ask the questions we ask. Do you understand? You, you know, we read the Bible and do not see what it's telling us. Okay, Jesus, the last supper, Sindio. He's feeding his disciples, Sindio. Why didn't he ask for a loan? Where did he get the money? You know, we always think he was broke. <laughs> huh? huh? You know, we always assume he was eating KDF, eh? In other words, you see, whenever you read the gospel to the poor, you must ask yourself, what is it saying? It means that when you receive the gospel, poverty ends. Oh, can I prove it to you? It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things shall be what? Added. Which things? Food, shelter, clothing. That's what he was talking about. So when you find this kingdom, your circumstance cannot remain the same. It can't. And I know you're struggling because there's the noble feeling of suffering for Jaja. Yeah? Let me explain to you. Persecution still comes when you're living in the palace. So God does not necessarily need to test you in the ghetto. Eh? Then you declare this is my period. Okay? For indeed, we have had the glad tidings of the gospel of God proclaimed to us just as truly as the Israelites of old did when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. So it's the same story. Okay? Let's continue. But the message they had did not benefit them. Because it was not mixed with faith. Now please understand, the message is supposed to do what to you? Benefit. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not what? His benefits. <laughs> His what? Benefits. The problem with many Christians, if you define your Christianity, it is all about no benefit. Oh, you know, we're just suffering. Even the testings and trials, by the way, are supposed to be overcome, not adjusted to. Do you understand? Testings and trials are supposed to be not adjusted to. So you're called more than a conqueror. It means more than a conqueror, what are you supposed to do? Every time you face a fight, you're supposed to win. You see, there is no better gospel song than all I do is win, 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 no matter what. <laughs> I sing hallelujah when I hear that song. 
Because he is defining me. All I do is, no matter what, got Jesus on my mind. I'm never giving up. And every time I step up in the building, <laughs> and they stay there. <laughs> Let me explain it to you. When it says all I do is win, it means every time I wake up there's a fight, but greater is he that is in me than he who's in the world. So when I wake up and my wife is sick, me and my kids say, bring it. Do you understand what I mean? So we're not talking about a world without challenges. We are talking about a Christian who overcomes every challenge. Do you get the difference? Are we together? You know, sometimes I wish I could take my faith and pump it into your hearts. Every day. <laughs> Listen. Because it was not mixed with faith, with the leaning of the entire personality in God, in absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. Please note. For someone who will believe and pull it out of heaven and make it their reality today. Listen, it says, go back, go back. It says, they shall not enter my rest. And this is said, although his works had been completed and prepared, waiting for all who would believe from when? So let me explain to you two things. Let me explain to you what is rest. Rest is when you do things God has already done. Okay. Let me give you scripture. I will go before you. See, that's what he promised you. I will go. In other words, this is what God does. If you believe him, He's gone ahead of you. And he's fought every Philistine already. What the Philistine is waiting for to be defeated is for you to show up. Amen. You know these things excite me, but you guys are... So, <laughs> let me explain to you. See, God rested from all And Jesus came and said, my father is always. So to explain to you how these, these two things are true is that in the eternal realm called heaven, God did everything that your purpose is supposed to accomplish. He's done it all. For it to become a reality in your life, you've got to believe God that he's done it. Hmm. And if you believe God that he's done it, all that is required is for you to show up. And you stay there. In other words, show up. And he'll tell you this is how Jericho falls. So you go around seven times, it falls. This is what is called rest. Okay. When... One of the prophets, this is your assignment, you need to go find it. One of the prophets said that the Messiah shall eat butter and honey. Okay, go find it. Okay. Then when Jesus came, he said what? My meat is to? So John the Baptist. It's it's one of the prophets. You find it. You found it. Eh? 
read it for them if you found it. Huh? You know it? Yeah, tell them, tell them that. So find it in Zechariah. Okay? So Zechariah describes Jesus as coming to do what? His food will be butter and honey, right? What is butter? It's a form of milk, right? So, what was milk and honey? Milk and honey was the will of God. So the land flowing with milk and honey is the land where you do the will of God. Because Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of my father. You understand? <laughs> See, it says your word is like honey. Correct? See, his word comes so that you can do his will. Okay? So, what this scripture is telling you, that before the foundations of the world, God finished all the work you are supposed to do. Okay? So this is what it means to be a co-creator with God. We are called co-creators, right? That means it is our job to get up, okay? And when we get up, we look into heaven to see what God has done and we carry it out on the earth that is called rest. Are we together? <laughs> you wake up in the morning, you see what God has done, and you do what he's already done, and that is called rest. <laughs> okay. No, no, to bypass, watch to Rudisha Highway. Okay? Let me explain it to you. See, God knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. We discussed this last week, correct? All right? And he chose you in Christ. Kitambo, senior. Now, this is telling you that other than choosing you, there are certain things that he did in advance for you. Senior. So, your job is to find out what he did and simply walk in it. This is the reason it says whatsoever you do prospers. This is the reason again it says <laughs> that whatsoever you ask in my name this is also what it means when it says your will be done, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Correct? Telling you that there is a place called heaven where everything concerning your life has been done. The option of whether it will be done by you or another generation is based on your belief. Uh, are we okay? <laughs> There's a look you've given me. It's hilarious. Okay, let me explain. See, God finished all work yeah. in Genesis, correct? Mm -hmm. He rested. Mm -hmm. But in Genesis chapter 2, we find that there was no plant, no nothing. Yeah. What is the reason that is given there was no plant? Please read it. Genesis chapter 2. There were two things missing. There was no rain is significant of Right? Because he says, my word is like the rain. It shall not return to me. So that rain is the word of God. Okay? And what's the second thing? Man. So that tells you everything that is in heaven that has not been done on earth is either because God has not released the word or there is no man. Eh. Hey. Bypass. <laughs> I will not even go beyond there. So let me try and explain this. Okay?
Can I give you another scripture? Find this. Yes? I'm, I'm about to explain. I'll give you two scriptures. But ask, ask the question. I was wondering, no man in the sense, uh, no one has been born to that purpose, or no one is showing up as in obedience, or what do you mean? Now, because we've read the New Testament, we know that all creation is groaning and is subject to decay, waiting for what? The revelation of sons of God. Okay? Now, you've been taught that Jesus is coming. Sindio? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you know why he's not come yet? Eh? It's not time. It's actually because the bride is not ready. I can see you've listened. Okay? Now, how do we define a ready bride? Okay? Now, Peter says something strange in Acts, and again, you, you've got to find it. In Acts, he says, Christ Jesus, whom the heavens must retain until every word spoken by every prophet is fulfilled. Correct? Meaning that Christ cannot come until every word spoken by every prophet is fulfilled. In who is the words of the prophet fulfilled? It's in you and me. Okay? <laughs> or who else would it be fulfilled for? So we keep waiting for the moon to turn red. When the prophecies are supposed to be evident in me. You understand? <laughs> are we together, guys? So let me explain to you how you do a business plan in the kingdom, how you start anything in the kingdom. Okay? This is why one time I told Elam, is this a world business or a kingdom business? Then he rebuked me. So let me realign. Okay? Let me explain to you. In the kingdom, when you want to do something, you don't find out whether it will be successful. You find out whether God has already done it. Remember, we've gone through a journey, right? And I've taught you about the Holy Spirit, correct? I've taught you about your purpose and calling, Sindio. I've taught you about your birthrights, essentially, correct? The fundamental work of the Holy Spirit was to do what? To bring you the mind of God, to bring you into all truth, and to show you things that are to come, correct? That means that by receiving the Holy Spirit, essentially what you got is access into heaven. Okay? Now, question. How many believe they are the house of God? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. How many believe that? Okay. So, let's go back and find the first house of God. It's called Bethel. Correct? Now, Jacob is the first person at Bethel. And how does he define the house of God? It is the place where angels descend and Okay? Now, angels are messengers, correct? Messengers carry words. So the house of God is the place where messages from heaven land. Correct? So now, how do you become the temple of God? You must be the recipient of messages from God. This is obvious. Every temple is the place we go to hear God. So if you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, you must be a reservoir of what heaven is saying. If you have the template of what heaven is saying, then you will know what God has already done and your purpose is called doing it. Okay, let me explain it to you. The children of Israel... When they went into the promised land, what did God promise them? I have gone before you and I have given these people into your hands. But when they went into the promised land, they were still giants. But they were assured of victory. Why? Because God had gone before. So their job was to simply do what God asked them to do. And every time was different. One time they went round 
Other times they would go to war and God would tell them, put on your armor, everything, everything, then go there and blow the trumpet. Correct? Do you know why God did it different every time? So that you don't worship a method. That's the biggest problem with Christians. God healed you one time by laying hands. Now you've forever been looking for someone to lay hands on you. Then you come to master class and Bichachi never does it. <laughs> hmm? And you, you go back to Kuriako. So, <laughs> what God was trying to show them that in order for you to have victory, what must you do? You know, Joshua was defeated once. Just once. And if you read it carefully, we always think it's about the guy who stole gold. Not really. The, the, the issue is that for once, Joshua did not consult God. He didn't ask him. If you read it, he didn't ask him. But every other place, Joshua is like, what should we do? And God tells them, go this way. Do this other thing. You see, if you read the story of Elisha, it's interesting. Every time the Assyrians were trying to attack Israel, they found out that there is a prophet who tells them where this, the Assyrians are coming from the north. So they show up surprised. They're like, <gasps> okay, we've been beaten. This is why they came to surround Elisha. Remember that story? And Elisha has to show how he sees the world. So his, his servant is scared. And he tells him, look, because Elisha could see what was in heaven. You see, Elisha could see what was in heaven so well that when an axe falls into the water, he did not do what we do. Oh Lord, the axe has fallen. That's what we do. But Elisha had seen into heaven. So he knew what to do. You notice that Jesus every time he was asked to heal someone, he didn't pray. Did you ever notice that? You know, we are the only, you know, Christians are crazy. We have a book that gives us an example, then we do the opposite. This is how we pray for the sick. Let us believe and pray for sister, the sister. So that's what we do. But what did Jesus do? Get up. Pick up your mat. Why was he able to do that? Because he could see what God had already. Oh, I prove it to you. Who sinned? Did this young man's mother, or was it his father, was it his own sin? Say, no, 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 no. He was made ill so that today the glory of God would be revealed. He had sin. The problem with you in your life, you cannot see what God does. So every time you want to do a business plan, you result to best practice. Sindio. Oh, you start looking how Richard Branson did it. How Bill Clinton did it. Oh my goodness. See, that's what you do. But you still broke. You see, you need to learn to see what God is doing. In fact, we'll continue. I think we need rest part two. I can tell from your faces. You're like, what is going on? <laughs> So can we do part two? Yes. Part three. So let me explain. God, concerning everything in your life that is according to your purpose, he's done it. Okay? The problem and why you're struggling is you cannot see what he has done. And there are two reasons you cannot see what he has done. One, you don't believe. And two, you are too good at how the world does it. Can I show you something interesting? And this is what I find interesting about the world. How Microsoft started and how Apple started is very different. How Virgin started, very different. Senior. How Universal Studios started versus Netflix started, very different. Sindio. Yet we read all these people trying to copy them. So which one will you copy? Trump? Bill Gates? Steve Jobs? Have you ever read self-help books? They're all so different. 
and you try to apply them and you think it works because you don't understand. Do you know how it's supposed to work? God has a way called Elam. What you need to figure out if you are Elam is every place you show up, you Elam. Do you understand? Let me tell you, the best gift God gave this earth is you. Not your education, not anything. Let me tell you something. You tell me how Usain Bolt became a champion sprinter. Have you ever seen anyone that tall win? He does not even have the physique of a sprinter. Do you know that? According to science, Usain Bolt should not be as fast as he was. Oh, Google it. In fact, according to science, bees shouldn't fly. Yes, according to science. Have you ever seen the body of a bee? Does that look like aerodynamics to you? <laughs> you see, let me explain to you what happened to you. The thing that the devil tries to rob you of the most is you. And he'll give you any excuse to get you out of rest. He'll give you any excuse. He'll tell you you have the wrong background. He'll tell you you don't have an uncle in the military. He will tell you you didn't qualify. He'll tell you you don't have the degree. Let me tell you something about me. I'm not qualified for any of the things I do. Oh, I do not have a preaching degree. I do not have a political analyst degree. Let me tell you, there is not a single thing I've ever done in my life I've qualified for. And I used to think God was unfair. <laughs> Let me explain to you something. The gift that is in you, that gift, subjected to the will of God, is the most dynamite thing you have. The devil, though, is clever. He's convinced you. He's convinced you absolutely that you have certain stumbling blocks. You don't have enough capital. You were born on the wrong side. Your name is wrong. You are born in, in whatever he can use to convince you. He's used it. And let me tell you something very interesting. Can I? In my life, Boni is my witness. 90% of the things I do do not bring me money. Boni, is it true? 10% of the things I do finance my life. 10%. Because I wake up every day and I promise you, I do only that which I have seen God do. And if I'm not sure, before I touch it, I have to keep asking God, is this you? Let me explain something to you and what rest is. The reason why Jesus never took a holiday and why you'll never see anywhere in the Bible anyone on holiday is because they discovered what I hope you'll discover for yourself. That the day your pleasure is your work and your work is your pleasure you'll always be working from rest. The day your pleasure is your work and your work is your pleasure, you'll always be working from rest. Everybody asks me, how, how, how do you do it? You write an article, you appear on TV, you teach master class, you run a business, because I only do the things that I was born to do. When I do only the things that I was born to do, when I begin to do them, they are pleasurable. In the middle of it, it's pleasurable. When the results come, it's pleasurable. 
I don't do anything that makes me go like, oh, this is so hard. Guys, let me explain to you. Before the foundations of the earth, God thought about you, right? <laughs> Can I dismantle a doctrine? I'm in time. Let me dismantle a doctrine for you. Many Christians believe that there are things inside their bodies. Okay? See, that's what you are told. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in your body. Isn't you? Okay. So, what you are is a reality captured in flesh. Isn't you? Okay? So, you, you are always trying to differentiate between your spirit, your soul. Isn't you? But Jesus said something strange. He said, fear God who is able to throw both your soul and your body into hell. Okay, question. See if the bodies of people are here. So what was he talking about? Do you know that at the end of the age, even the sinners have to be given back a body? Telling you, telling you that the accurate human being is not a three in one. It is that those three are the one. <laughs> it is that those three are the. Let me explain to you why this is important. It is important because for you to understand the, your mandate on earth. It is when you understand your spiritual you finds expression in the success of the physical you. Do you understand? So do not consider for one moment that your spiritual piety is considered before God as enough success. <laughs> you see, here's the problem. This is what I'm trying to address. For many Christians, we consider that if I have done the right thing, often enough, I'm a good person. Yet, if you look at the parables of servants, you will understand that God expects a profit on his investment. <laughs> Did you understand what I just said? You are God's investment. And from you, he expects a profit. That profit is not a heavenly profit in the sense that, God, look how many prayers I made. Oh, look how many verses I made. Is that how it's measured? No, it is measured by Paul when he says, I have run the rest, I have kept the faith. What does it mean? He says that everything that God told me to do, I have done. It says... But those of us who are born again, you see, we keep misreading the Bible. You, you, you will not be judged for sin. Because it says those who have been accepted by Christ, there is now no condemnation. But there is a test for you, and that test is called the test of your works. And it says that our works shall be put through the fire. And those who built with straw, it shall be burnt up. And they will enter as though escaping by the skin of their teeth, correct? But those who build with gold, their works shall stand and they shall receive a prize. Oh, so what is God doing? God is a businessman. How many times did Jesus compare him to a master who had a servant? So God has invested a thing called talent, purpose, and capacity in you. And when he comes back, he wants a multiplication. If you cannot multiply your talent, God calls you wicked. Oh, I prove it to you. The servant who brought back the talent was told, you wicked servant. So stop fearing for which doctors fear for yourself. You see, uh, 
let me tell you, you, you think the servant with the one talent just went to sleep? No, no, no. no. He went and worked on another talent. <laughs> Do you understand? You see, the guy went and profited other things. There's nothing more dangerous, a friend of mine said once, there's nothing more dangerous than being successful at the wrong thing. That's one of the ways the devil gets you trapped. You're so successful at the wrong thing, trying to get you back is hard. But let me tell you how important you succeeding in your identity is. Your success in your identity, number one, brings Christ closer because you fulfilled one prophecy. Sindio? But number two, how many people will be saved because you got it right? I want you to just imagine if you have a generous heart, you are a loving person. Can you imagine if you make it to be a billionaire, how this country will change? Can you imagine? You not walking in your purpose is robbery to the body of Christ. Are we together? This thing called rest is critical. It is a, the identifier of your salvation. People know you are saved because you walk and live and talk in rest. You see, I told you guys that if in my life there is no constant improvement, you need to question what I'm teaching you. Correct? All right. Now, that is how you should treat yourself. Everything in your life, and I mean everything, should constantly improve. <laughs> You're looking at me like I'm mad. I've seen your hand. Please read Abraham. Okay? What does God say of him? And Abraham was rich in what? It starts listening. Cattle, land. Correct? Sindio? Jesus? What did he say? He grew. In what? In wisdom, in stature, and in standing with men. In other words, Christ's life was a constant upgrade. The challenge I want to give you this week, now that I've defined rest, next week we'll talk about entering rest. Okay? But now that we've defined rest, I want to challenge you. It's a very simple challenge. Number one, you will notice I don't do miracles at master class. As in in class, I don't lay hands on you and do those things. Do you know why? Because I want you to go and do the miracle. Okay? So I'm not asking you to do a miracle. I want you to go home and get angry at your life. I want you to get angry at your life. Whatever it is you've achieved and not achieved, I want you to get angry. And I want you to look back at the list we did last year in December. And I want you to decide that you're not going to let that be a reality anymore. Whether it is joblessness, cashlessness, lovelessness, Whatever it is, I want you to declare war. Do you understand me? I want you to look at that Philistine square in the eye and tell him, I'm coming for you. Then next week, let's talk about how to kill that Philistine. Are we together? Have I defined rest for you? Are you challenged? Let me tell you, more than backsliding, you should fear a thing called status quo. You should fear staying the same. Oh, that's the most dangerous thing in Christianity, by the way. Your question, miss. 
question time. Hi. Hi. My name is Bertha. I'm new here. I was invited by Claire. Please oh. for, forgive my voice. It's decided to disappear. I thought it's Tony Braxton. <laughs> <laughs> not, not today. Mm. Not today. Anyway, my question is, how do you deal with oppression? Oppression? Spiritual oppression. Like, for example, we mm. know for a fact that familial curses and generational curses mm. exist. But at the same time, you have all these blessings and birthrights. And mm. places like Ezekiel, I think Ezekiel 18 says, the sins of the father will be visited upon the sins mm -mm. of the son. Or six Ezekiel says the opposite of that. No, there's a... Pl oh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel is the one that says they, they will no longer, longer be visited. Be. Yes. yes. But before then, they were visited on the sun. Yes, in Exodus. Yes. Now, let me explain. Eh? Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's first, um, how do I put it? Number one, in Exodus, God did say, I'll visit the sins of the fathers on the sons up to the third and fourth generation. Okay? In Ezekiel, God did say that no longer shall the sins of the fathers be visited upon the sons. Okay? Now, what is critical is to understand that we who are blessed with the blessing of Abraham cannot be cursed. We can't. Whether by fathers, mothers, grandchildren, we cannot be cursed. You cannot even be cursed by a witch doctor. Okay? A witch doctor can take all your clothes, your hair, all those things they collect, put it under 16 C's, wherever they put it, it will not affect you. Correct? But, to put what the issue is in a nutshell, you talked about spiritual oppression. I want to explain something to you. First and foremost, I'm trying to compact many weeks of teaching for you in one. So I'm trying to find an entry point to, to, to journey you through quickly. First, a spirit can only oppress you for your ignorance. It's the only way. Okay? Let me explain to you how. It says my people perish for lack of Meaning that everything in my life that is subject to the death principle, it must be that life has not come. Sindio? That's correct, right? Because death does not exist. The absence of life does. Darkness does not exist. The absence of light does. You see, we can quantify light, but we can never quantify darkness. Sindio? Death, therefore, is the absence of life. But Jesus said that my words, their spirit, and their life. Telling me that if there is any darkness, it is not the presence of demons I need to worry about. It is the absence of light I need to be concerned about. You understand? Therefore, the devil subjects the people who are in his kingdom to oppression, not because he has authority, but because they exist in a plane outside of light. This is explained when Jesus says, you shall know the truth and it will set you free. Correct? So how you deal with oppression of any kind is not to bind, okay, because that time bind has been misunderstood. The term bind there is a legal term. Okay? It means to declare illegal. How do you declare a thing illegal? Mustn't you know the law? You understand? So oppression only occurs because you do not know the law. Am I making sense? So what your challenge should be is not to bind demons. Your challenge should be to find the truth. If you find the truth, it is like switching on the light, the demon must leave. Do you understand? Yeah? You still have a question. Uh, don't worry, you're new. We do, don't even feel shy. Okay. Just go ahead. I've never felt shy for questions since uh, class one. <laughs> I always have questions. Uh -huh. Now, <coughs> on the question of legality, mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact that everything that mm. you are given in heaven, mm. it comes through a legal process. For yes. example, 
Job, the reason that Job was, there was a presentation of the angels, it was also a legal process. Mm. Romans 8 says that Jesus stands in perpetual defense of us. Mm -hmm. So now, mm. if, for example, a matter has been settled and full reparations, restitution and restoration has, has been ordered, yes. how do you achieve that? Okay, now let me explain. It's a very good question. Number one, Jesus paid the price, correct? Now, Jesus paid the price so significantly that he, he, he rigged the trial. Okay? First, he went and paid the price you get. In other words, if the, 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 if, if, if the jail sentence was six years, Jesus has served your time. Okay? By dying on the cross, he paid the time. Then, he went the other side of this story and then became your defense attorney. When he's actually supposed to be your persecution. Okay? Now, not only did he rig, the judge is your father. <laughs> that Romans 8, read it correctly. It says, God, the judge, is your daddy. Right? So imagine, you walk into court. Your big brother has already paid bail. And gone to jail. Okay? Then your big brother, who's supposed to be your persecutor, switches to be your defense attorney. And when the judge walks in, it's your daddy. How is it supposed to work? That's why it says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are who? In Christ Jesus. However, there remains a challenge. The challenge is this. That God decided that he will not claim your victory for you. Okay. This is how it means. When you go to court, you're served, you're given papers to serve. Okay? So I want to give you an example. Come, sir. Batman. I like Batman. Come stand here. Okay? Now, I've gone to court. I've been given a ruling. Remember when the ninis was shut down? The TVs were shut down, right? They went to court. They were given a ruling. The ruling was in their favor. Correct? Now, what they needed to do, so this is the guy. Let me give you a practical example. This guy has stolen your land. Show your tattoo so that you look bad. Eh? <laughs> so this bad guy has taken your land, correct? So you've gone to that trial process, okay? And the judge, who is your father, has given you a ruling in your favor, okay? If I take this ruling and I go home with it, and I repeat it to God. See, that's what we are told. We repeat the ruling to God. I am the head and not the tail. <laughs> Where's the guy? <laughs> On my land. In Christ Jesus, I'm more than a conqueror. Where's the guy? <laughs> as long as this paper is not served, I remain landless. It does not matter how many times I quote the judgment. So this is how it works. Remember I told you it is to declare a thing illegal. It is to go to this person and tell them, you are standing on my right called health. Here is a court order kicking you out. That's why it says I have given you authority. Authority means legal license to operate, correct? So I have given you legal license to operate to say, get out of my land, it is mine. It is not about reciting the words, it's about acting the words. That's what he meant when he said that faith without works is dead. So for as long as they were unable to serve notice for eviction, it could not work. This is why the master tells the servants, occupy until I come. What is it to occupy? To occupy is a military term. It does not mean to sit on a seat. To occupy is how the British occupied you. It means to displace the enemy until he comes. This is what it means to enter rest. So we have a ruling from the heavenly court in our favor. The problem is we do not know how to serve the enemy. I've served you, take the service. Do you understand? That's what it means to bind. It means to declare illegal. 
that you've been sitting on a land that is mine. So now I've come to kick you out because this land is called my rest. Do you understand? You see, we, 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 we must learn to upgrade what we've always known. You understand? Thank you, sir. Have I answered your question? So, can we stop quoting the judgment and start leaving the judgment? Thank you for your paper. Please give her the microphone. Um, what if kicking this person out of the land, the seed mm. land, takes time? For example, health. It's a trial you're going through mm. and you've said, you know, you've served the notice and said that get out of my land mm, and mm. this is my health. Yes. Like, what is, what is, how, how are you supposed to behave? How, sometimes it takes time. Okay. And in that suffering, God is teaching you as well. Now, let me tell you, that's the most important question to ask. Because a lot of the time, this is what happens. Okay? Where's Batman? Come, come back, sorry. <laughs> and, and is this your first time in class? Oh, no, okay. I thought I'm bullying and someone who's new. That would have been unfair. You've been stayed here. So you are a form two. You can be bullied. Form ones are those who don't get bullied. Okay? Now, let me tell you something. See, this guy, okay, has one job. Okay? I'll go back. So I have my ruling, right? Okay? How do I trick this guy out of his out of his ruling, Sindio. When the devil went to tempt the, the woman in the garden, what is the first thing you said? Did God really? Okay. When Jesus is being tempted, what is the first thing he says? If you are. Meaning, did God really? So his job is not, he can't oppose you, okay? He knows, but he has to question you whether you know. So, so you, you are serving me, you, you seem not to want to speak, I serve me. Hapa, imesema, son of God. Are you really a son of God? Jana usiku ilikuwa. <laughs> Unajua Jessica? Hofa ya nina Jessica. <laughs> eh? Ukiwa uhuru highway, suli bribe your cop. Mimi najua son of God na kunga righteous. You are you righteous? Eh? Okay? See, these are the things you go through. Now, if he, so he makes you, the most basic level is he makes you question whether you're worthy the judgment. That's the first thing. Okay? Then, if you pass that test and you say, you know, I'm washed by the blood, you, I, I'm forgiven, and therefore I am a son. So you pass that. Then he tells you, Ebungoja, does God love you? Because Unakumuka ukiwa class 2. Ulinyimwa bike. Uyo gada nakupenda kweli. See last week, last week, last week. You applied for this same thing. Suili shindwa. Okay, if it's health. Atumepua na ulcers. Sunasikia tumba ina umasai. Eh? Ati bichacha likuambia u receive Holy Spirit. Kaunge kuwa ume receive Holy Spirit. Bunu nasikia kufanya zambi sai. See, these are the things that go on. I'm explaining to you exactly what the guy you are serving does. You understand? So, he tries to bring you evidence to show you what you are believing God for is not true. Sindio? If all else fails... 
he gives you what is called a grasshopper mentality. Hapa imesema inakupea 1000 acres. Unagumko ukiwa na eka moja ya mahindi vile ulipata loss. 1000 utaweza wewe? It's called grass? Grasshopper mentality. Huh? Ati sasa you want to stop being shy. Wona kwa the last time ulipea na speech vile watu walikucheka. <laughs> How was was well kwa say ashua high school. Sai ni ma professor tu wewe utaweza. In other words, when you serve that notice, the attack that comes back has to do breastplate of righteousness, are you righteous? Helmet of salvation, are you really saved? Belt of truth, do you know your facts? Shoes of salvation, did he really send you? Those are the questions. So if you do not know who you are, you'd be like, hey, tufanya hivi? Siko shua. You understand? You see, if you read the story of Moses, thank you, sir, there's an, interesting, there's an interesting twist in the story, the ten plagues. After every two or so plagues, Pharaoh gave them a deal. He was like, so just sacrifice over here. So just go into the desert and come back. He gave them various deals, meaning that what happens in our journey, I'll give you an example. See, I, I told you that I am now processing myself out of sinuses, Right? Now, let me tell you, up to like the 10th of January, 10th, 15th there, I used to take a tablet nearly every two days or nearly every day. Sindio? Now, when I got this word, I was like, bus, ni mamaliza. You get? There are times I am going to bed, eh? I feel like my sinuses will explode. You get, as in sinuses are a physical structure. Sinotitis is the disease. Okay? So I feel like my sinuses will implode. You get? And I feel like, hey, oh, you God, has he really healed me? Okay? So I ignore, I go to bed. I sleep the entire night. I'm like, phew, hey, that one we happened. You get? Then I wake up another day. I am sneezing. My nose is running. I'm like, and I'm supposed to go on TV. <laughs> Do you know what is happening? There are two things. Number one, I'm so used to it that the devil has so many entry points, not to my body, to my mind, to affect me to believe that I've not been healed. You understand? Now you wait the day you make a mistake. That guilt, the devil goes, hey, nizo vitu gani, sayi hana faith. Ana kurushia because you find it hard to believe that God will be good to you uh, and you kissed Stephen. <laughs> so we all abandon God's goodness because, hey, you know, he can't be good to me, I've been so bad. Do you understand how these things work? Have I explained? So it, listen, it did not take God 25 years to give Abraham a child. No, 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 no. It took Abraham 25 years to believe God. It did not take God 25 years to give Abraham a child. It took Abraham 25 years to believe God. Let me explain to you. It's true for me so that you don't think I'm putting myself above. It's true for me. There are certain things in my life that have taken me longer to overcome because I was so experienced in the lie. You see, Abraham had 75 years of unsuccessful sexual encounters. In terms of no children. 
You see, Abraham knew backwards how not to have a child. You get? For God to overturn his mentality took a while. So that you know God really overturned his mentality. When Sarah died, Abraham nearly had 10 other children. He was like, oh, come Jesus said that he who does not bear fruit is cut off and thrown into the fire. Now, that is true. Okay? And please understand, okay? When it says no condemnation, it is talking about sin. There's cure for all types of sin. There's just no cure for fruitlessness. And the reason there is no cure for fruitlessness is you cannot know God accurately and not bear fruit. It is impossible. You understand? You see, you cannot be a tree connected to the right soil in the right climate and not bear fruit. Correct? It is impossible. That tells you in the beginning, in the first place, you are not really part of Christ. <laughs> I know that's a hard saying. You see, listen, if I'm part of a football team, Sindio, Namimi ni sab wa sab, you know, sab number 11, number 22, okay? When the team wins, do I get a medal? Meaning, if I am vitally connected to Christ, I cannot be fruitless. Because Christ is not fruitless. Do you understand? So, the connection to Christ guarantees you fruit. Do you get it? You see? So, you cannot be pretend grafted. You know, people who believe God, but they don't believe God. That's the problem. That's who he's talking about. You see? Oh, I, I, I'm saying, you know, I'm trying to be nice. Oh, man, that's a hard saying. If you do not bear fruit, you're not connected to Christ. Is that just the truth? <laughs> yeah, yes, ask. This is getting interesting just towards the end. Mm. Now, um, in Hebrews chapter 4, mm. verse 3, where um, we believe God to be full of power, wisdom, but we just don't believe in his goodness. Mm. That one has captured me because someone else has told me this to my face. I mm. believe God and everything he can do, but I don't believe in his goodness. But it's coming from a point where there are three ways, apparently, or mm. so I've heard, how to approach God as a father, as a friend, and as a judge. And so it seems like some of the things that we are believing God for are not happening because we've not petitioned our case in the courts of heaven. So I need to learn how to go and... I mean, yani, choka. Let me help you. Nimesha <laughs> <laughs> choka. First, yani, why nimechoka? Why nimechoka? Is the person who goes to God as a judge is called the devil, the accuser of the brethren. Why do I need to go to God for, as a judge? He's my father. You get? Let him go judge the bad people. Me, when my son does wrong, does he come to me as a judge? I am always his father. You get? When another kid hits my child, there is no for justice. It's why did you hit my son? Let me explain to you. All the nations that God used to punish Israel, what did God do to them? You see, God is weird. You see, you need to understand that God is your father all the time. You get. And no son petitions the father for food. If you found my son going, oh, please, 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 can I eat? Oh, please, 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 can I eat? You'll think, hey. What kind of father is this? But yet those are your prayers. Oh, please, 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 can I eat? You see, if you believe God is a good father, certain prayers change. You see, accurate prayer, grown-up prayer, is ask and I'll give the nations to you. That's where you're supposed to be dwelling. 
Una, unauliza three bedroom in Sukimao. People are praying for the planet. <laughs> I thought there was something wrong. I'm going to check. I just give my sister the microphone. <laughs> where, where imagine? Imagine your, your dad is the wealthiest landowner and then you are busy asking for a quarter acre. Do you know how crazy that sounds? It is because you believe God is mean. Last question. So you were right. This is going to take a while. So you mm. need to walk with me, okay? Okay. So um, with the spirit of discernment, eh, yes. we are able to just from knowing what is right and what is wrong, yes? Mm. Like, for example, herring. We know mm. it's wrong, it will give you addictions and whatnot. Yes. And the beauty of God's word, I've come to know, mm. is that somehow even science agrees to it. Yes. So we now find out, oh, herring is wrong, yeah? Yes. So um, where I'm driving at is I want us to take a closer look mm. into sexuality. Mm -hmm. Because we've been studying and we've said the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. And the truth is knowledge in God's word. Yes. So the reason why many of us are struggling with this is because we don't know the truth about this. Yes? True. So um, we tend to take it as a bad thing, mm -hmm. especially before marriage. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But I find it very difficult to understand mm -hmm. seeing as this is the number one distinguishing factor between mm -hmm. male and female like it's just there you know mm -hmm. and with all this if it was meant to stay until marriage mm -hmm. when it becomes good then it will be like cuts um clothes that are retractable you know mm -hmm. so you don't see it and then it's activated on marriage yeah mm -hmm. so <laughs> Yani, let me tell you, eh? You, you make no, me just, lose just, my just, face. just pause. Wait. Ja <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, eh? Let me tell you. That is the number one question Christians have asked and not had the guts to speak out loud. Wait, wait. Because, finish, 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 finish. Yani everyone has postponed eh? class in answer. <laughs> I warned you. <laughs> I was up all night because of this. Yeah. Uh. So <laughs> <laughs> No, that that's why he knew it. That's why he said he knows it will take a while. That's yes. why he didn't want to take my question. Uh -huh. Anyway. So as I was saying, yeah, now to make it a bit throw another curveball, yeah. Mm. So you remember you said back last year, you said mm. with every sin, God teaches you to overcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with alcoholism, you said, you know, you'll get a time you won't want to drink. Mm. You understand? Yes. With drugs, you'll get a time you won't want drugs. Yes. You understand? But with sex, it's not like, oh, you won't want sex. Exactly. You'll be sex with one person. You understand? <laughs> so, so it's not like God goes like, okay, stop alcohol but keep your whiskey mm. you understand but this is the same thing that happens with sex you understand so it does not really make sense how we vilify it yet you read the book of songs and solomon of solomon yeah and how god presents it as pure and yes. noble yes mm. and all this i'd say okay you know with as i started you know alcoholism you know you like straight out see how your life deteriorates yeah yes. with sex the outcome is what you get a baby children come from god you know <laughs> let me let me tell you let me tell you eh? first let me tell you I thank God you're asking this question in 2018 because I only received the answer like 
three, four months ago, I would not have the foggiest because for the longest time, that was exactly my question. Sin, sexual sin was the one sin that never made sense to me. Okay? Because in my mind, you see, if I steal her water, I have injured her. Correct? I can tell what I've done wrong. Okay? If I worship another god, I can tell what I've done wrong. Whatever sin I have always done, I've always known that this is the consequence of sin. But I always had the problem because consensual sex tended to cause pleasure both ways. Okay? Let's, see, let's be honest, okay? And number two, my problem also was that, God, you're telling me not to engage in this thing, which is fine, but is it, do I have an off-on switch that I can switch off between now and when I'm married and switch it on? And then after you're married, can I switch it off during the day and switch it on when I see my wife? <laughs> that was the problem. Now, the, 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 the trick, and it took me a while, to understand this, and probably we need to, 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 to teach this. Maybe this is a confirmation that we finally need to have that marriage and relationships talk. Eh? <laughs> but let me, let, me give you, let me give you hints, because the topic is wider. Number one, remember what I told you, that the biggest danger that we have as human beings is to take a God idea and put it in the human context and explain it based on a broken system. Um, and that's really the problem. Because the issue is not really sex before marriage. The issue is we do not know what intimacy is. That's where the problem is. You see, let me explain it to you. Intimacy, the lowest form of it, the cheapest form of it, the easiest form of it is sex. Okay? The deepest form of it is nakedness of your heart. Okay. Have you ever wondered why when you meet someone who seems to understand you fundamentally, you are immediately attracted to them? Because intimacy... <laughs> Not those fundamentals. <laughs> because inherently, when we say, regardless of gender, if someone is close to you, there are people who know your secrets. That's how you define closeness. Okay, the person who knows your deepest secrets is considered the closest person to you, correct? Now, the problem is this, that when we don't understand intimacy correctly, sex becomes the expression of it. Now, the human need is not a need for sex. It is a need for intimacy. When the need of intimacy is not met, then sex becomes the all-encompassing definition of intimacy to you. Okay? This is why in Proverbs 31, it defines help, okay? And it talks about a woman who can give you wisdom, knowledge, availability, and practice, okay? In other words, she can be wise with you, she is knowledgeable with you, she can practice with you, and she is present. The problem with today's marriages is we define all these things by one thing, presence. I was there for you. Therefore, I was a wife or I was a husband. No, you did not qualify in the other three avenues of intimacy. In other words, intimacy is born at the place where you think like me, you practice like me, okay? You have knowledge about the things that affect me, okay? So when we meet, we don't need to date, we just live because 
if you look at all the best romantic movies, they have one thing in common. They all have not a commonality of attraction, they have a commonality of purpose. If you can have purpose together, attraction is always guaranteed. And the funniest thing is this, that if you can find that kind of intimacy, sex stops being a need. So the challenge is not fighting with lust. You cannot win. The challenge is to reconfigure what intimacy is in your life. In fact, I dare say, and this will prove in scripture as we go ahead, that you cannot overcome lust outside of a community. Hear what I said? You cannot overcome lust outside of a community. Because intimacy can only be acquired if you are a man and know how to love men. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. The highest robbery that the devil has done to society is it has robbed you of the love of men. Let, let me explain. Let me explain. Did you notice that the person who's most charged to love and bless children is the man? Yes. Did you notice that the person called to love in a marriage is the man? Yes. And yet in almost every marriage we can see the woman loving the husband more? So what is happening? You see, this is the problem. You see, when you look at things upside down long enough, they make sense. This is the problem. So what we're going to do, because I was actually praying about this issue to see what is the next topic after rest. I think after rest we will talk about marriage, relationships, and sexuality. I think it's been confirmed. But to put you at ease and to help you with the issue, let me tell you, it is actually true, actually true, that every sin, how you know you're free from it, is you stop desiring it completely. Every sin, listen, if you go to sleep and still dream about drinking, you're still an alcoholic. <laughs> Let me just help you. Can I make it worse? And the scientists will kill me. You still have wet dreams about other people. You're still lustful. Let me explain to you. Let me, let me explain. And, and by the way, do not think. You see, the goodness with me is I am a professional at sexual sin. I have done it all. All. Even that one you're imagining, yes. So I understand the extent of the bondage, okay? Now let me put it to you in, pers in perspective, okay? It is actually possible for that God to bring you to a place where you can actually be totally okay, not tormented at night tossing and turning until marriage. It is actually possible. Okay, I, I never used to believe this, but it's actually possible. But the problem is, the issue, whenever you're talking about marriage, the Bible gives funny answers. Eh? When you talk about divorce, when you talk about everything, God, Jesus always went back to the beginning. Paul goes back to the beginning. He says, God made them like this. You get? So, in other words... Every problem that you have about sex, you've got to check your beginning. So, so, so that we cannot stay here until tomorrow, because this is a hot topic. Eh? 
Next week, we do rest. The week after that, we do relationships, marriage, and sex. So, please, please bring your bo boyfriends, girlfriends, and wives and husbands, including the potential ones. And by the way, if, if, I, if I will give you a hint, if I will give you a hint, by the time you are done, you will not be dating, courting, all those experiments you do will end. Eh? As you know, it's always an upgrade. You're looking at me like, huh? You know, Brenda, Brenda meets me every week and she's now looking at me, she's like, but I'm dating, I know. But it's now time to upgrade. Cindy. Okay? So come prepared. Alright? May God bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. And by the way, see I'm not reminding you about giving. By the way, can I tell you something? And this is not to defend myself. But the biggest sin you can cause yourself is to cause the person who speaks to you to suffer when you're living well. It is actually very wrong. I don't mind it myself, by the way. I'm not asking you to help me, but I'm telling you, as a spiritual principle, let me tell you the truth, okay? You know, you guys have not met Opio. The relationship I have with Opio, he knows. You know what he calls me? This is how he calls me. He tells me, Mark, nitumia kila kitu kwa mpesa. He knows I will send. Because I cannot afford for him to be busy trying to buy shoes instead of busy finding revelation to share with me. You understand? But you see, these things should be easy. It should come to a point where, you know, in the world, this is what I always find funny. I show up and talk for 20 minutes. Half of the wisdom I give you, they pay me 60K. I come and talk to you for free. So, and I'm not talking about me. Eh? Please, it's not about me. I'm just teaching you a principle. Okay? So please, minima chaka ku remind what to give because I keep arguing with God because I tell God all the time I don't need it. That's my biggest. If you want to know I have pride issues, that's where it is. Jen will tell you I don't like asking for help. I hate it. So, please, let's all grow up. May God bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Tukutane next week. Unona watu waliogopa solem na assembly leo. Oh, and by the way, when you meet them, please do tell them what we discussed. Yes. Okay? And then please say hi to me. Me, I love people. So please hug me. Hi. 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 Hi.